Good morning. Isn't it beautiful to have a candlelit church? This is the pre-announcement before the proper welcome. I just want to let you know a few things so that we can enjoy the service without interrupting it. <clears throat> First of all, just to tell you, as it says in your order of service, this year our Denham Church Christmas Appeal is for two uh, groups we support. The first one is Trinity Shock, who look after homeless people in our area, particularly poignant at this cold time of the year. And the second one is Tear Fund, who work across the world where the need is greatest. You can find out some more about these two appeals um, on, the, on page, whatever it is, page 15 in your booklet. And um, our offering today our retiring offering will go 100% to these two charities. Secondly, over the last 10 days, our Give and Share team have been really busy packing bags for family who might be struggling this Christmas. At the last count, they have been packing 250 bags, which will all be district indeed. Thank you. which will all be distributed through local schools. Um, um, Caroline and Craig are here, and so if you want to find out more, you can talk to them after the service. They've also made some bags for adults, and in them we've got some basic supplies, and I think a blanket, is that right? Yes. Not yet, the blanket will come. So if you know someone, a friend, a neighbor, someone who uh, lives nearby, who is really struggling this Christmas. We've got five bags at the back, and we'd love you just, you don't have to tell us, just to pick up a bag and take it and give it to someone who might just need that little bit of extra help. Please do that, we'd love you to do that. Families, we've got, after today, two more special services for all ages. On Christmas Eve, we've got the four o'clock crib service, for which we're inviting you to bring a new toy, a new gift for the, um, Home and School for, of RNIB, Home and School for the Blind. That's on Christmas Eve at four o'clock. And on Christmas Day, we have a fun, short, action-packed family service for Christmas Day at 10.30 again this coming Sunday. One other thing just to briefly draw your attention to, and that is on the, on some page, on page 14 in your booklet, this service will be led by Edda and Azita, and Azita will be telling her story here at St. Mary's on Monday the 16th of January. It's an encouraging and uplifting story, and you really don't want to miss that. So please take a look, and uh, please sign up with the link given there so we can manage the numbers, get the number of refreshments right. The title of her evening will be From Refugee to Reverend, and I thoroughly recommend you coming and hearing her story. We promise the church will be heated for that evening. And so without further ado, I'll hand over to Azita and to Edda. Good morning, my friend. Very morning, very warm welcome to all of you here and those of you who are joining us online. Uh, my name is Azita and I'm part of team here and today Edda and I will be leading the service. It's such a privilege, the microphone should be on hopefully, it's such a privilege to welcome you to have all ages together for this carol service 2022 and we can actually meet in person, how special is that? And equally you are so welcome um, if you are online um, being with us this morning. And um, everything you need is in the service sheet. We are trying not to over-moderate the service, so anything that is in bold uh, means please join in. And um, hopefully it's all straightforward. So we're getting ready for our first carol. Um, please keep, remain seated for the first two verses, and then we invite you to stand. Simple. 
The prophet's promise is saviour. The child is born to us. The son is given to us and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for our next carol. Baptist announces the coming of Jesus. The voice of one shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up. Every hill and mountain leveled off. The winding roads must be made straight and the rough paths made smooth. smooth. All people will see God's salvation. I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Thanks be to God.
Please take a seat. This next reading involves all of us, so please join in at the appropriate points. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. The angel told her, And you will name him Jesus. Mary asked the angel, The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, so the baby to be born will be holy. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything And then the angel left her. Joseph learns the truth. This was how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she found out she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. 
Joseph was a man who always did what was right, but he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly, so he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened in order to make what the Lord had said through the prophet come true. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary, as the angel of the Lord had told him to do. Thanks be to God. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her, de- for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them to in the inn. Thanks be to God.
joy to save the world that God so loved. Father raised the starry veil, revealed His dear love, eternal race.
The angels announced the birth. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone above them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. Thanks be to God. Not have known, but we've got angels with us. And they're going to sing to us as the angels did on that first Christmas to the shepherd. And one sheep. And one sheep, exactly. <coughs> and one sheep, Zachary says. <laughs> Eight angels and one sheep. The shepherds find the baby. 
When the angels went away from then back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angels had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angels had told them. Thanks be to God. The wise men followed the star. After Jesus was born, men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child and when you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. How happy they were. It went ahead of them 
until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and presented them to him. Thanks be to God.
The Son of God, Jesus Christ, was there from the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. Amen. Please join me by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day.
Well, we've had such a wonderful variety of different, different contributions. So I want to begin by saying a big bang, no, a big thank you. Can go a bit lower. Can say a big thank you to the choir, to the children's choir, to Stephen, our organist, to our two trumpet players, to everyone who is making this service really special. Thank you. I wonder how many of us can finish this line from a Christmas song. It's the most wonderful Ding dong ding. It's amazing, isn't it? These things stick in your head. Well, for a few minutes I'd like to reflect with you on recovering the wonder of Christmas. Some of us, many of us in fact, may know Denham Court. Denham Court is an old manor house which is literally a few hundred yards in this direction, connected with the church through a beautiful alleyway. And it was originally the family, the stately family home of the Boyer family. Uh, it fell into disrepair in the 1930s, and for some years after World War II, it then became a youth detention center and a children's home. And in one room of that dilapidated house hung a dark and dirty painting. Most of the children who lived there in the 50s didn't give it a second look. Some of them even used it as a dartboard. However, when a visitor spotted it, he got really excited. It made his heart beat faster because he recognized it for what it truly was. And it turned out, after they restored it and repaired it, that it showed the house of the famous painter, Sir Peter Paul Rubens. And it was displayed in London's National Gallery. One more claim to fame of Denham. And I wonder whether sometimes we treat the Christmas story a little bit like that old painting. We've passed it many times. We think we know what it shows, but we don't really take a proper look anymore. Or maybe we've tried to make sense of it, but the older we get, the harder it gets to make any sense of it. We've lost the wonder. How can we recover the wonder of Christmas? When I was three years old, three years and a bit, my mum took me to a crib service at the church for the first time. I was very excited. Now, that was 1970, and in those days, you may remember, the motto was, children should be seen but not heard in church. So she gave me very clear instructions before we set off from home. She said, you know, Christoph, do not talk, certainly don't shout out loud, and I promised by everything that was holy not to open my mouth and to be good. When we entered the church, it was beautifully lit, and I forgot all caution because that sense of wonder completely overwhelmed me, so I shouted out, Mummy, look, a Christmas tree! Mum tried to rein in her little three-year-old son and said, Do you remember what we agreed? No shouting, no talking. But I just looked at her, and the wonder wanted out, and I said, Mum, why should I be quiet in here? It's wonderful. I felt right at home. Well, wonder and joy wants out. It cannot be contained. We see that in the shepherds, who are so eager after they've had this special performance by the angels. They run to Bethlehem, they find the child, and then they told everyone about what they had seen and heard. They're quite childlike in that approach, aren't they? And children help us to recover the wonder. We all know that when we have children or grandchildren or nephews and nieces who experience Christmas with wide open eyes. A four-year-old boy was asked to give thanks before Christmas dinner. And he took his role very seriously. So first, he began to pray, thanking God for everyone he knew. His mum, his dad, his grandmother, his grandfather, his great granny, uh, his uncles and aunts, his brother, and even his sister. And then he went on to all the lovely food. He went on to thank God for the turkey and for the vegetables, and uh, for the mince pies, and even for the brandy butter. And then suddenly he paused. 
and everyone was waiting. And he paused a little longer. And finally he piped up and said, but mommy, if I thank God for the Brussels sprouts, won't you know I'm lying? <laughs> no pretense, no guile, and a sense of wonder. That's how we receive the kingdom of God that Jesus came to bring. And so this Christmas, let me give a few ideas how we might recover that sense of wonder. Firstly, as you leave, we've got some very special gifts, and maybe they can rekindle in you a sense of wonder. For all the children, one per family, we've got this lovely Christmas story as a comic book with puzzles and quizzes and uh, Calamy in pages. And for the adults, we've got this book, which is called... Who Do You Say I Am? is beautifully produced to retell the story of Jesus with wonderful photos from the Holy Land. And we'd like everyone here in church, as you leave, to take one away with you. Secondly, I'm often so encouraged and inspired when people come to faith in Jesus, how they discover the wonder of Christmas. So listening to someone who's come to faith in Jesus can really rekindle that sense of wonder. Well, on Monday the 16th of January, Azita, our training curate, will be telling her story. And I invite you to come to sign up for that and to recover some of the wonder of the good news of Christmas. Thirdly, in January, we are starting again with something called Alpha, which is an experience together in a group to discover who Jesus is, what he came to bring, and why he has changed human history like no one else before or after him. Again, you can find out more on our website, and the link is on the back of your service sheet. And then finally, over the last few weeks, Ed and I have discovered a wonderful um, series which puts Jesus' life into film and imagines what it was like for the disciples who followed Jesus. It is called The Chosen, and you can find it on any of the streaming platforms. Don't worry if you don't subscribe to any. It's also on YouTube, The Chosen. And it really has drawn us into this good news story again and has warmed our hearts in a fresh way. And so as we come to the end of this service, let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us not to simply walk past the stable of Bethlehem this year, but to linger and to recover the wonder. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Let's stand for our final carol.
Thank you so much for coming. We'll be closing the service with the blessing. But just to say at the back of church, there is coffee, there is tea. It's a bit of a self, um, self-service station, but Kathy is there at the back as well. And there are loads of mince pies. So you must help us, please. <laughs> Let's go with God's blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remains with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.